What if we could have a game that plays other games? I would like to tell you about a project that I've been working on. It's a game where you can have machines that can interact with your computer as if you would do this interaction. They can click on screen, move the mouse. So basically send any type of input as if you were actually moving your mouse or typing stuff. But if this game is supposed to play your other games, clicking is just a part of the deal. The game also needs to know where to click. So in this game there will be machines that will make stream shots and some other machines that will figure out what to click. And figuring out what to click is not always easy. Sometimes it can be done by matching a bitmap, but sometimes maybe we will need some more clever algorithms. This game is not just about replaying macros, right? It has to make some kind of decisions. So we will need machines that can make decisions. Those could be decision trees machines. The machines could represent blocks of regular programs, like Python code or JavaScript code, to make those decisions. Or if the situation gets fuzzy, we could use neural networks. All right, that's pretty cool. It seems like this automation game becomes like a different way to use a computer, where everything could be programmed in game. Since this is a game that controls your desktop and through which you can interact with your desktop, why don't we add multiplayer? Invite a friend and you can work together on a single computer. It's like Google Docs, but for any desktop app. As you can see, this is quickly getting out of hand. And this is the point where we should probably take a step back and limit the scope. But you know what? Let's not do that. It's going to be difficult and might fail, but it doesn't seem impossible. All of those utilities already exist as separate apps. Essentially, what we have to do is to figure out a way to pack those utilities into machines that could be combined. And if at the end, people using this game would get kind of the same powers as programmers, right? Because they could automate stuff. That would be pretty cool. I think that would be worth it. In fact, I, as a programmer, would like to use this kind of game to interact with my computer. I call this game Automat and I've been working on it for quite some time. I'd like to tell you more about it. This is the first episode of the vlog for this game. I'm not going to get technical today. I leave the nitty gritty for subsequent episodes. Today, I'd like to tell you what's important to me, and how I'm developing it. And my first goal is to make it free. So let's talk about economy for a minute. If you take a look at games and programs that we use, you will notice that some of them are quite expensive, while some of them are quite cheap. The way economists look at that is that when you're using a game or a piece of software, you're getting some value out of that. And they would like to get as big chunk as possible of this value to be delivered back to them. This allows developers to keep improving the apps, so it's good. I don't think it's bad to ask for money in return for valuable software. If it's good software and it serves the purpose, it should be funded. Otherwise, we wouldn't have good software. Uh, there are, however, some downsides to paid software. Reasons that I decided to make Automat free. I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. Let's start with limited access. There are some people who would like to play a game or use some kind of software, but simply can't afford to. It's easy to brush them off as software pirates. You can assume they are lazy, they're free freeloaders. Reality is not always as black and white. If you look at income inequality across the globe, you will see that a lot of people have very little, and those that have very little could benefit from Automat the most. Because Automat could not only play games, it could help you in the work, it could help you in education, it could help you start a business, it could empower those people. Limiting the access to those who have the most money, the money to spare, seems like the opposite of what we should be doing. The second problem with paid software is that it has to take bad technical trade-offs. So the most common monetization approach is to keep the software on the server and just sell access to it as an online service. It's the most popular approach because it effectively eliminates piracy and it provides stable, relatively constant revenue stream. However, any online service comes with extra latency, lower performance, and extra maintenance cost for the servers. This is not the way to build quality software. This is a way for making money. Another approach is to have software licenses, but this approach also has problems. You must be online for the license checking code to work, and the license checking code itself could be removed from the software. So you never see license checks alone. You always have license checks plus integrity checks. I mention those integrity checks because they 
slow software down and they have false positives. So it slows down the game and it diverts resources from developing a better game to fighting piracy. Anyway, the idea is that however you monetize software, the monetization approach always has a negative drag on the software itself. And I don't want that. I would like to focus on making the best software that I can make and not fight users that want to use it for free. The third problem with paid software is so-called entritification. It's a result of an adversarial game played between developers and users. Developers initially try to create the best possible app, even at a loss. They offer it online for free. And they do this to gain popularity, to gain recognition, to create a dependence in users and lock them in. Once they gain enough popularity, and this usually happens when the user base stops growing, they switch to value extraction. They introduce paid subscriptions, increase prices, they make it harder to unsubscribe, they make it harder to take out your data. It's a slow process. Developers try to do this carefully, not to scare off users. Sometimes it can play over the years. Eventually, however, and this is the terminal stage on the entitification cycle, most users migrate to another service, which is in the growth phase. It is a slow process. You can see it in places in the economy where popularity matters. I brought this in the context of Automat. If I made my game a paid game, hire people to help me optimize the business, eventually entitification would happen. I don't think it's possible to build an efficient, money-oriented organization without eventually going in this direction. Lastly, paid software bypasses the user's right to fair use. This is not a strong argument. It's more a personal sentiment that I have. It's that in the past, you didn't always buy software as a license. Sometimes you could buy software as a copy. And the law around copies was completely different than software licenses. You are free to make your own personal copies and share them with your friends and family. You can resell the software. Those things were actually part of the law. They were protected by the law. Nobody could forbid you from doing this. Unless they sold software as a license, not as a copy. The reason that paid software switched to software licenses was that this fair use, it was easily abused. People were making copies and sharing them online, quite often attaching some malicious attachments to the software. There is also a security argument there. Anyway, right now, if you want to play a game with your friend or a kid, you kind of have to buy two copies to play. But if you're at a party, you have to buy a copy for everybody who wants to play the game. I think it's one of the reasons we play more games with strangers online than with our friends and family. And this is another reason why I would like Automat to be free. I think every software is better if you can play it with your friends and family. There are very few open source games, but I think open source could work really nicely here for a couple of reasons. First, Automat is the kind of game where users might be motivated to inspect how it works, tweak some things, add their own machines, or just use it to learn how to code. Secondly, it allows other people to uh, join me and help with development. Normally this is difficult because how do we split the revenue? Not everybody puts in the same effort, not everybody has the same results, so it's a problem but not for a free game, because if a game is free, revenue split is not a problem. And the third reason is that the MIT license, the license that I picked, is fairly permissive and opens some very interesting use cases. For instance, anybody would be able to take Automat and integrate it into their own game. That would be cool. Goal free. Every megabyte counts. I'm a low-level programmer. I care about performance and I'd like Automat to run as fast as possible. I've chosen to build Automat as a single binary without any extra dependencies, without the need for installation. It's written in C++. It uses Vulkan to render itself. At the moment, it takes a little over 8 megabytes, although it will grow. Even though it's unoptimized, it's already pretty fast and I'd like to keep it that way. There are plenty of existing automation tools. However, most of them require some form of programming. The difference with Automat is that I would like it to be more direct and immediate. So you can interact with those machines with your own hands and not through some kind of programming language. I also want to make it fun and interactive. If you pause it, and you could pause it mid-execution, you could inspect all the machines. You could progress it step by step maybe fix errors. 
as much as I've looked around, I couldn't find any direct manipulation, immediate environment where you could build such machines. And that's a pity because I think direct manipulation is the most intuitive approach for writing programs. And it's also the most correct in a sense that it closely matches to what computers actually do. More closely even than programming languages. Because if you write a program in a programming language, it goes through several transformations before it becomes executable. This executable is not the same as the program you wrote. Sometimes there is a mapping between them, but it's, uh, it's not the same thing. When it comes to direct manipulation, they are the same. The code that you see on the screen, like the blocks, the machines, they are the program that is being executed. The moment you change something, the effect is immediate. Now, take this immediateness and directness, add some animations to visualize what's happening, add some sounds and nice behavior so that it's fun to use. I think this is how computers should have worked. Always. Okay, goal number five, respectful. This is probably the shortest point on the list. Really, it should be obvious. I talked a lot about Automat being free, and I do this because it helps me align my goals with the goals of other players. I can make fun, rewarding a game instead of trying to catch players. It's a tool slash game. It's meant to be useful slash pleasant to use. And that's what I want to work on. Existing software is not easy to replace, so Automat is designed to wrap, extend, control any sort of existing software, and I'd like it to run on any platform. Currently, it's Windows and Linux, but I'd like to expand it more in the future. I don't know how computers of tomorrow will look like. Maybe we will have more interactive installations. Maybe VR will pick up. IoT and wearables are definitely going to grow, I'm trying to develop Automat so that it can run on any type of hardware. I hope to be able to run Automat on watches, smartphones, TVs, and so on. This is probably the more long-term goal, but it's there. All right, those are my seven goals. I said a lot of pretty words, but what matters in the end is working software. I'll show more of it in future updates. Until then, you can play with the alpha version at automat.org. If you're interested in updates, you can subscribe to the newsletter at the website or use YouTube subscriptions. And I guess that's it. See you in the future updates.